What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. Today I wanted to discuss Zamazenta and why it is probably one of the worst picks for a restricted on your team in Series 10 and explaining in depth why Zamazenta simply doesn't work as a concept for this particular type of format and maybe why it will work in a future format. But if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And that's my comic question of the day. Which of the restricted Pokemon do you actually believe needs a buff? I know that's sort of a weird question asking what legendary needs a buff, but I think there are some legendaries that are actually pretty outclassed and underwhelming. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, Zamazenta is a really interesting Pokemon conceptually. If we actually take a look at it, it is a fighting type Pokemon with an alternative form that allows it to be steel type if it's holding the Dauntless Shield, which also gives it a stat buff and a slight decrease in its speed. Let's take a look at that Zamazenta first, since it is actually the most, you know, relevant in terms of restricted, at least at the moment. So it has a base 92 HP, 130 attack, 145 defense, 80 special attack, 145 special defense, and 128 speed. Those on paper are absolutely phenomenal stats. They look busted. The only stat that isn't really that great is its special attack, and it's only ever going to be using it for like Snarl if it really wanted to use it. This Pokemon also has access to an exclusive move called Behemoth Bash. It's a 100 power or 100 base power steel type move that doubles if the target is Dynamaxed. It's the exact same as Behemoth Blade, just with a different name. The main difference is it doesn't hit quite as hard as Behemoth Blade because this Pokemon doesn't have the ability, uh, doesn't have the ability Intrepid Sword, and it doesn't have the attack stat of Zacian Crown. Taking a look at these two attack stats, Zacian Crown has an attack stat of 170, and this guy's stuck at 130. And you can tell on paper it's mainly meant to just be a bulky Pokemon. However, it's just really hard to justify fitting this guy on your team. You might be thinking, okay. I can use this thing to beat a Xerneas, or maybe I can use this thing to check the Incineroar next to the Xerneas. Fighting and Steel aren't that bad of a combo, they actually help each other out. I am firmly of the opinion that this Pokemon would actually be better if it was pure Steel type, just because it'd be such a perfect Xerneas counter, because it's both very powerful offensively, can naturally outspeed a max speed Xerneas with its high 128 base speed, and can one-shot it if it was able to run in adamant nature, but the truth is it just can't do everything you need it to do. This Pokemon seems like it can be a good roll compression Pokemon, but you, what you actually find is it's a pretty mediocre pick in just about everything you can do with it. Let's start off with checking Xerneas. So if we actually take a look at this thing, if you max out its attack stat, it's still a roll to KO Xerneas with adamant max attack with 4 HP. Throwing that in the damage calculator, I thought I had it ready, but apparently I did not. Uh, Zacian Crowned with an Adamant Nature and 252 attack versus a standard Xerneas that's going to be the 4 HP variant. We actually see that Behemoth Bash, for some reason I have a choice band on the set when I'm calculating it, that Behemoth Bash is only dealing 98 to 115 percent. While that is a heavy roll in your favor, while you do have an 81 percent chance to O code the Xerneas, you'll find that it still is pretty underwhelming because Xerneas is usually paired up with Intimidator means that attack is mostly going off at minus one, meaning that you're only going to be dealing 65% to 77% against a Xerneas. That is a huge issue for Zamazenta because while Zamazenta could normally deal with an Incineroar by close combating it, you'll actually find that at minus one, you're not even coming close to an Oko. Uh, the Incineroar coming in and intimidating it will make it so that that Intimidate that it just put off on it will cause the Zamazenta to have to two-shot it with a close combat, dealing 79% uh, to 94%. And while that is a lot, you don't want to have to close combat because it will make you weaker to the Xerneas, and on top of that, you're probably getting faked out anyways. So yeah, it's not the best Xerneas counter, and if it was pure steel type, you could actually tank the Xerneas hit just a bit better, but that fighting type actually brings it down typing-wise, making it neutral to the Xerneas hit, making it difficult to check it at all. I do ever, however have a stat spread that you could be using on this guy. Uh, I did come up with a hypothetical stat spread if you wanted to check it out. This thing is going to be running the stats of 132 HP, 36 attack, 132 defense with an impish nature, um, 52 special defense, and 156 speed. Now you might be wondering, what exactly does that do? I'm playing into Zamazenta's tanky nature, what it 
could do. Once again, it's still going to be kind of underwhelming in most things. So what this guy's able to do is that special bulk will allow it to easily tank a plus two timid moonblast from the Xerneas, allowing you to possibly two shot it with Behemoth Bash. It, even after the Intimidate, your Behemoth Bash will still be a two shot on the Xerneas. So you can hopefully block the fake out with like a quick guard or something, or fake out the Incinera before it can attack. Go for the initial Behemoth Bash, get that Xerneas down to 50%. And then on the next turn, you're gonna have to tank a Moonblast and do the same thing. But at that point, you're likely just trading your Restricted for another. So I wouldn't necessarily call it a counter as much as it is just a light check on the Xerneas. Now, physically defensively, I actually just said like, look, this thing, it's, it's kind of crazy. If you actually take a look at it, Zacian is a better fighting type than Zamazenta, mainly because Zacian's close combat on average does much more than Zamazenta's does, and that's Zamazenta with like max attack. Zacian with max attack does much more because of its plus one that it gets on switching in, and it's um, naturally higher stat of 170. So it actually kind of gets countered by Zacian, because even if you max it out, you're not really two-shotting Zacian with anything other than a close combat with an adamant nature. And the Zacian itself actually threatens you pretty hard with Sacred Sword, which bypasses your defense drop, still letting Zacian use its uh, plus one on its attack stat, or your defense boost, and still lets Zacian use its uh, attack boost. But this set will allow you to get cleanly three hit KO'd by the Zacian. You will survive with 51% HP uh, on that Sacred Sword attack from the Zacian, but that is only... If you intimidate it so you have to pair it up with like an incineroar or some kind of intimidate pokemon to allow yourself to do that uh you will be able to i believe two shot a zacian let me double check that uh you will be able to two shot zacian with close combat sometimes because you're doing 46 percent to 55 percent so it's a 64 percent chance to two it ko but that also requires you to outspeed it on the next turn so i guess if you wanted to use this thing, you would definitely need like a Regia Leki next to it or a Tailwind user next to it. On top of that, I mean, something that's kind of good about Zamazenta Crown is the fact that it does, it gets access to some pretty cool support tools. You could run Coaching, you could run Wide Guard, you could run Snarl. All of them are very good. I would say Snarl is probably the best out of all those moves because it does allow you to somewhat deal with Xerneas a little bit. You can Snarl it twice pretty safely and get rid of that Geomancy boost, at least on the special attack side. However, that speed is still going to be an issue, so I think Close Combat's a bit better. Uh, Snarl is really good for helping out versus powerful special attackers like Kyogre, or um, if you run into opposing Volcarona, that will allow you to at least tank hits a little bit better if you're trying to protect something next to it. Uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider definitely doesn't like the Snarl since you can easily tank its hits, so that's a really good tool for beating Calyrex Shadow Rider. Wide Guard, speaking of, you know, beating Calyrex, uh, will be able to block a lot of spread moves like Astro Barrage, like Expanding Force, uh, like Water Spout, like Precipice Blades, like Dazzling Gleam. That's really nice. Wide Guard's a great tool in this format. The issue is with Zamazenta, if you haven't noticed, if I haven't made it clearly enough, it's very mediocre. It's such a mediocre restricted Pokemon. If it didn't take up a restricted slot, you could justify using this thing on just about every team. But the fact that you are choosing to use Zamazenta over Zacian Crown, something that, like I said, is technically a better fighting type despite not being a fighting type, you're going to put yourself in a bad position in most matchups. That being said... I unironically believe that Zamazenta uncrowned, Zamazenta hero formed or hero of many battles is actually better than the crown formed in this format. And that's mainly because when you're choosing a restricted Pokemon, you shouldn't be choosing a restricted Pokemon to support other Pokemon. Your restricted Pokemon 99% of the time is much more suited to being an offensive threat. Take a look at the most successful Pokemon in the format. Take a look at Shadow, uh, Shadow Rex. Uh, take a look at Zacian, take a look at Zamazenta, take a look at Kyogre, not Zamazenta, take a look at Xerneas, take a look at Kyogre. They're all very powerful offensive Pokemon, and that's the point of a restricted Pokemon. They're meant to deal damage. They're meant to be a threat in the field. Zamazenta just does not fit that criteria, especially now that there are no Dynamax Pokemon. Behemoth Bash isn't as powerful of a tool for dealing with Dynamax Pokemon. So what I found in my testing was that Zamazenta, don't, Zamazenta uncrowned the fact that it can hold an item to increase that attack set actually allows it to bypass some of its issues and the fact that it has higher speed. If we take a look at its stats, it drops its defenses to go more offensively. And even though its attack stat doesn't rise, that speed stat makes a big difference. So our stats now are 92 HP, 130 attack, 115 defense, 80 special attack, 115 special defense, and 138 speed. 
This extra speed actually allows us to run an adamant nature instead of a jolly nature. And that adamant nature will allow us to outspeed uh, a lot of Pokemon. I believe 180, yeah, 180 is enough to outspeed Pokemon like Tornadus, um, even if they're timid max speed. And while they will tailwind a lot of the time, sometimes they'll just get cocky and say like, yeah, I'm just gonna hurricane you. So that's actually a pretty decent speed tier to use. And if you're facing against Thunderous, if you're able to dodge a Thunder Wave, that's actually a really nice speed tier to hit. And it really isn't too much investment um, too much more investment than you would want to use otherwise. Cause like, obviously you'd want to outspeed like Raichu, uh, and that is just like one point lower than Tornadus and Thunderous. So it, it's worth the extra point. This spread is going to be running a choice band with 52 HP, 212 attack, four defense, 68 special defense, and 172 speed with an adamant nature. Our set is close combat, iron head, wild charge, and crunch. Now, this thing is just meant to pick up KOs, and once again, you definitely need speed control with this thing if you want to make it work. And that choice band will allow us to bypass Intimidates, uh, like like Incineroar. Like, we're straight up one-shotting Incineroar with our close combat now. And actually, if we take a look at the Zacian matchup, we could technically win this 1v1. Z Most Zacian aren't running player off right now, which means that with our Dauntless uh, Shield boost, we actually tank plus one Behemoth Blade pretty well. It does 79% to 93% to us. So what we could do is close combat on the first turn. And then on the next turn, we can actually straight up the close combat might one shot, to be honest, because it's doing 86 to 102%. So if we don't one shot, which is more than likely the case, what we can actually do is just go for a tailwind the next turn and KO it on the next turn. This thing is also capable of one-shotting fast Kyogre with either close combat or wild charge. Wild charge is mainly there to help you out versus you know, just other Pokemon. Like if you want to one shot a, a Thunderous or not a Thunderous, um, one shot a Tornadus, that's very useful. It's it's smarter just to close combat um, Kyogre's because you don't want to take so much recoil. But this thing is just a one shot machine at that point. Uh, while we can't one shot Xerneas anymore because we lose our Steel Stab, Iron Head Steel deals a significant amount of damage, making it a very clean two shot. And with any amount of chip damage, it will likely be a one shot. That adamant nature, the fact that we can run so much speed on this thing without having to run Jolly, allowing us to bolster that attack stat with an adamant nature and a choice ban, makes this thing somewhat more viable. It even doesn't mind the Calyrex Shadow matchup, granted you don't get Expanding Force, because if we look at Calyrex Shadow, if we max out Calyrex Shadow's uh, special attack and give it a Timid Nature, give it um, Astral Barrage, because Expanding Force obviously is going to be doing a lot of damage. Astral Barrage is only going to be dealing, without a Life Orb, 52% maximum, which we can one-shot it back with Crunch very easily. This thing is just... <sighs> Zamazenta on... How do I say it? On paper, Zamazenta looks fine it looks like a great restricted pokemon but the fact of the matter is if you're going to use restricted pokemon you probably should be going offensively that being said i think zamazenta has some hope for viability in the future and that's exclusively if we end up going back to gs cup rules if you're not familiar gs cup rules are a rule set where you're able to uh use two restricted pokemon on a team the reason zamazenta might have some viability there is because You'll be able to have one very powerful restricted on your team, one that's meant to be offensive, one that's meant to pick up KOs, and Zamazenta can support it pretty well. In my opinion, Zamazenta Eveltal isn't a terrible combination because Zamazenta will be able to somewhat protect it from opposing Xerneas or uh, opposing Pokemon that just generally would give it a hard time, mainly fairies. Zamazenta can one-shot a lot of fairies, like it can one-shot Grimmsnarl, it sometimes can one-shot Xerneas. Uh, it's, it's just a great Pokemon in that sense. So yeah, I think that Zamazenta was, it came the wrong generation. I think if we got it like last gen, it'd actually be a pretty decent pick. But the fact that you were only getting one restricted per team makes it a huge issue for Zamazenta's viability. I've tried it out on a few teams. I'm speaking from experience. This thing is just not worth using on a lot of squads. That being said, if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've had success with Zamazenta, what your highest ranking on the ladder is with this thing, and what set you ran. I'm really curious because I cannot make this thing, like I can win games, right? But I cannot make it feel like it's good. It feels like it's a it's a liability on my team. I'd much rather be running a Zacian 90% of the time. So yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.